Hi, I'm David Greer and welcome to Live Big. Today we are going to take a look at one of my dad's most recent teachings and learn some valuable do's and don'ts of life, along with lessons about the company that we keep. Take a look. We're gonna be in Psalm chapter one. This is the first Psalm uh, that David wrote uh, in the Bible. Verse one, blessed is the man. Who would like to be a blessed man or a blessed woman? Uh, David understood the importance of the blessing of God more than uh, most people in the Bible. Um, uh, why? Because the blessing on his life, after he sent with Bathsheba, the blessing on his life was never ever the same. Uh, one daughter was raped by a brother. Uh, then a, a child died uh, um, uh, right after birth. Uh, then three sons were, were killed, uh, executed really. And it also seems that his married life was miserable. And David ended his life, uh, you know, the sweet psalmist of Israel at only 70 years old. He died unable to keep warm, and he was a heartbroken man. And I know that that's not the way many of us see David, but David never fully recovered uh, from what happened with Bathsheba. So he understood the value of the blessing of God. He says, blessed is the man. So he begins uh, his psalms. He begins his major contribution to us by telling us what not to do, and then later he tells us what to do. Uh, but the word blessedness here actually means happiness. Um, and basically what it's saying is when God's blessing is on you, there will be a level uh, of joy and, and literally uh, happiness. And I know I've said in the past that happiness depends on happenings, um, but those happenings do not have to be external. They can be internal. Because I find that, you know, if I'm in a difficult moment and God adjusts me on the inside and, and gives me insight on the inside, I can be happy in the midst of whatever I'm going through. So, again, he tells us what not to do. Then he tells us uh, what to do. But let's first take a look at what he says do not do. He said, blessed is the man who walks not, who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Now, one of the fastest ways uh, you can mess up your life is to start listening to the wrong people. Start taking cues from the internet, start taking cues from what everybody else is saying, the cultural trends and, and all the rest, or, or Dr. Dummy with all the degrees by his name, but no common sense. Um, that's a great way to get into trouble. This is why God gave us this book called The Bible, so we can always have good advice. And this is why you come to Bible study. This is why you're a part of, of Sunday services. So you can always have God's word in your ear, good advice in your ear, so you can make good decisions. He said, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. So walk not means don't do it. In the counsel of the ungodly, now what is, what is ungodly here? What, what does that mean? First he's saying all counselors are not equal. Um, the, the word ungodly here literally means someone who, that doesn't have a definite rule, uh, someone who doesn't have a standard outside of themselves. This is the person whose God is really themselves, their opinion and opinion polls and what other people are saying and doing. Those are the folks, they're ungodly. Those are the people that, that are in this category. They're not following the rule of God, the direction of God. Uh, they are simply following culture, the circumstances and where everyone else is going. So he said, blessed is the man who walks not, again, don't do this, in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands, so first he talks about walking in the counsel of the ungodly, but secondly, nor stands, so walk, now what stands, now what stands in the path of sinners. So uh, if you want to, to live a, a happy life, uh, there's a way uh, not to walk, uh, a way you won't walk, but there's also a path you will not stand. And so we see in a moment, we're going to see there's a progression. It's uh, walking, standing, and then uh, sitting. And, uh, you know, let, matter of fact, let's read the, first, the next verse. Uh, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Now, isn't this how it, it goes? First, it's bad advice you get while you're walking. You're trying to do the right thing, and you get some bad advice in, in your head or in your mind. And you work walking towards your goals. You were getting this thing done. Uh, but then it gets you to stop. It gets you to stand and stop moving in the direction that you were going in. And then before long, you finally sit down and stop going forward altogether. So uh, this is the progression. 
you're walking, trying to do the right thing. And David was initially trying to do the right thing in his life. But then, you know, this, this thing with this lady, you know, he's probably started thinking, well, I'm just going to do what all the other kings do, and they get away with this type of stuff. So uh, he, he, he stopped, and, and, and then uh, he ended up sitting down. And, and like I've said in the past, you know, when, when it comes to situations like uh, David and Bathsheba, the issue is really not the first look, it was the second look. It's, you know, because we're going to see stuff, and, and, and it's going to be interesting, you know, because we're, we're humans. Uh, but it was that second look that caused him all the trouble in the world. And then he invited her in, and he didn't uh, sit down, if you will. They laid down. But uh, you see, in uh, with, with David and Bathsheba, you see a progression in his response to the situation. It says, nor sits in the seat of the what? Scornful. So uh, first, it's some bad advice. Maybe you're, you're, you know, you're getting it from friends. Maybe you're getting it um, from movies you're watching. Maybe you're getting it. Uh, just just from the, the neighbor next door. Uh, but, but then you, you find yourself settling into the thing you at first resist. So it starts in your thinking, then you're behaving, and finally it ends up in the crowd you start saying you belong to. Uh, you, you, you've heard it said, and, and I think it's pretty good advice, whether the number is three or five, but um, we become like the three to five uh, top people we spend most of our times with time with now that's just the reality we we, we influence one another even if you, you're not intentional and you're not trying to someone you know has a certain sense of humor you start laughing at situations just as that person uh, laughs at certain people per, situations of uh, that person's philosophy that person's mindset over time will begin to to rub off on you for good or or for bad so who you read who you watch who you listen to is impacting you more than you ever realize. This doesn't mean we should be hermits and stay away from everybody. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm talking about those you uh, choose to spend most of your time with, they begin to rub off on you. Uh, you know, this is why I'm glad you're with me for Bible study. My hope is that these principles of Scripture will rub off on you. And then if you join me again on Sunday, we're going to have, you know, two encounters, maybe two hours a week, you know, us communicating and talking with each other, even at worshiping together. Um, that, that's important. And may uh, what's right in me rub off on you. And uh, it's so important to be in good uh, company. Nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Now, what, what are scornful people? Well, according to the Bible, the scornful people are those who are constantly criticizing, finding fault with God <clears throat> or the things of God. Uh, those are those who are, again, um, a lot of times people do it innocently. They're always mad at God, blaming God, God, why, God, why? Um, but often that leads to a scornful mentality and mindset. And they kind of live, you know, 50 years of their life saying, God, why? God, it's not fair. We will all have God, why moments. But I'm talking about the person that kind of sits in it, not just someone that kind of passes through a moment, but sits in it. And this is their life and, and, and their, their attitudes. And if you sit with anyone too long, this is really important, you'll eventually catch their offenses and their attitudes. Um, it's amazing how if I'm mad at someone, uh, it's just going to be a matter of time before I try to get you mad at them, too, uh, or, or vice versa. And, you know, folks that, that uh, have issues with, with certain people and certain things, they will, over time, try, try to cause that to rub off on you. And it's just part of the human condition. So with that, we need to be intentional about who we spend most of our time with. This is why the Bible says that we're not to be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Thanks for tuning in to Live Big. The second half of the teaching is coming up, so stick around. You don't want to miss this. Check out the Derek Grimm Ministries YouTube channel. Revisit your favorite moments from the Live Big broadcast and watch popular teachings. Get in the now hot takes and dive into Bishop Greer's Ministry Minutes and bite-sized noonday teachings that can only be found online. Get all of this and more at home or while on the go. So, subscribe to the Derek Greer Ministries YouTube channel and hit the notification bell to get fresh content from Derek Greer that will help you grow stronger, live bigger, and get closer to God. So, who you spend time with matters, and the values that they have will eventually rub off on you for good or for bad. And here's the deal you keep playing, playing with fire, you will eventually be burnt. Now, as a young person at times, as a matter of fact, as an old person, I have at times, uh, young and old, I felt that I was the exception to the rule, uh, but I've, I've learned that um, if I start uh, hanging around the edges too long, uh, it's just a matter of time before I, I, I slip in. But verse 2, finally David's going to shift from telling us what not to do. He's going to begin to tell us now what to do. Verse 2, 
but his delight, meaning he's not uh, walking uh, in, in, the, in the counsel of the ungodly. He's not um, uh, standing in the path of sinners, nor is he uh, sitting with the scornful. Um, because if, if, this is, if verse 2 is your heart, you're not going to be comfortable in those situations. But his delight is in the law of God. Again, he, he makes this, this, this shift. And the only way, this is important, and it might seem so simple that uh, you're going to just gloss over it. But, I mean, truth is really simple. It is, it's not always as complicated as we try to make it. Uh, the way you're going to keep the blessing of God uh, in your life is to delight. That, that's so important. The moment I stop relishing and, and celebrating and, and delighting and, and enjoying God's word, I know I'm in trouble. And uh, so at that time, I know I need to pull away. I need to get along with the Lord. I need to find out what my issue is. Just like, you know, when you lose your appetite, often it's indication you're sick. When I lose my appetite for the things of God, uh, something's going wrong in my soul. And I've learned to pull aside and say, Lord, can you help me fix this thing and, and untangle this thing? So my appetite for you uh, re re returns. Um, so, you know, I, I've also found, too, you know, the devil's a pickpocket. And what he'll do is he'll distract you on this side to get to something on this side. And every time that, you know, I let him distract me with whether it's complaining and griping, I'm, I'm not talking about, you know, having a moment with God. I'm talking about chronic. I mean, over and over again, this is just what you do. Um, I know he's trying to steal something from me because he only comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He's a thief. So when he tries to occupy my mind with nonsense, irrelevant stuff, things that really don't matter, okay, the, the tie uh, Bishop didn't wear uh, on Sunday, or you know what, I'm not sure uh, what political party uh, bish bishop, bishop is. Um, um, you know, I, 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 I don't know, you know, what type of car does he drive? Uh, by the way, it's, it's a used car. I, I bought it pre-owned, and uh, uh, but everybody should mind the business. You know, as long as folks get stuff honestly, it really shouldn't matter. Uh, but it wasn't a very, very expensive car, but I enjoyed a heck out of uh, my vehicle. But what we'll do is we'll get distracted by nonsense, and, um, and, and, and then we'll, we'll lose the appetite for the most important things. Just like when you were a kid, your mom would say, you know, don't, don't eat all the, the sweet stuff because it's going to spoil your appetite. And what happens is, um, you know, there's a lot of junk, a lot of nonsense that gets in the way, and we begin to lose our appetite for the things of God because... Uh, uh, maybe, you know, a greeter uh, wasn't as friendly as you uh, may have wanted them to be, but maybe that greeter had a bad day. That greeter's a volunteer, um, and, and maybe there, there's some serious issues, and that person's doing the very best they can, but we get distracted by things of really no importance, and, and we, we then make them important, and then we lose the, the, the main thing. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. The law of the Lord is literally the word of God. My delight is in God's word. Why? Because through his word, I know his will. And if I know his will, I know him. Uh, so just like my wife and I, you know, a major part of our relationship is communication. And if I don't understand what she's thinking and, and what she's saying, um, th there's, a, there's only a certain level of relationship we can have. Our word matters and God's word is how we know his heart. It's how we know his, uh, what he promises us. He, it's how we know where we're going. Also, his word even locates us. Sometimes I don't really read the word. The word reads me, and we, we need to do that. But, but with that said, you, you, when, when I start losing the, the, the delight, the hunger, the passion for God's word, I know I'm in trouble. But his delight is in the law of the, 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 the Lord. So one of the ways I monitor my spiritual growth and, and just where I am spiritually is through my, my joy level, through my okayness level on the inside. And um, when my joy starts going down, I, I have to lean in to start looking up and spend a little extra time looking up. And what some people do is they take messages like this and then they use it to beat themselves and condemn themselves. We all have moments where we're going to feel uh, joy challenged, if you will, or we're not going to feel as happy as we want to feel. Uh, but that's not what I'm getting at. When you, have, when you start feeling that, you need to, to turn to God harder. And what I do, sometimes it might take a day, it might take a day and a half. I just turn to him even harder. And before long, I'm able to shake loose of that thing that was really trying to grab hold uh, of my mind. And in his law, he meditates day, watch this, and night. So if you really want to experience the best of God, it can't be a casual thing. It can't just be a casual relationship. It needs to become a night and a day lifestyle, day and night 
thing you got to go after with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength if you really want uh, to, to receive and walk in the blessings of God. You see, the key to changing your life is changing your schedule. And I've, I've found that when things start getting rocky and I start feeling some, some kind of way, I start changing my schedule. I start getting a little bit more into the Word. I, I start, um, you know, taking longer walks with the Lord. I, I, I start adjusting my schedule because my schedule reveals my pr pr priorities. And you always have time for things you put first. You always will have time for what you put first. You just don't have time for things you put second. So if you don't have time for God, really, the real issue is he's not number one. Uh, he shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water. A tree planted by a river has a continual uh, water source. Uh, it taps into the unseen waterbed next to, to the river. So the thing is, a, a tree that's planted by the river um, has to have very deep roots because, again, you know, you, 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 we know what a river does and what it is, but as you move miles uh, away from the river, there, the, the waterbed from the river uh, still exists. It's kind of hard to explain. I wish I had an image to show you, but I, I think most of us could kind of understand what, what I'm saying here. So what, it, what the tree does is it, its roots go deep so it can tap into the river beneath. It's an unseen source. So this type of tree, its life and its leaves, its fruit, are not, it's, it's not dependent on, on, or they're not dependent on the weather. They're depending on the water table from the river. Um, I, I really just said something. You can become independent of what's happening all around you, whether it rains or doesn't rain, if you tap into that river uh, that, that flows from, from the city of God. And God wants us to go deep enough so that we tap into a source that, uh, you know, environment and circumstances cannot impact, a source that, only, that, that exists only in, in, in God. And then it says that brings forth its fruit, but this is important, in its season. This is important for particularly new people in the faith. Even though you have been planted well, even though your roots are growing deep, this is really important. Your fruit will only come in season because it, it, that brings forth its fruit in season. So you could be doing all the right things. You're like, how come it's not working? It's not season yet. It's not time yet. And you can do all the right things, but you have to wait for your time or your season. Every season is not fruit season. One more time. Every season is not fruit season. Some dry seasons are really root seasons. Why? Because what happens in, in a dry season, the root starts looking for water. I don't know if roots smell water. I, you know, I don't, they don't have a nose. I don't know how this works. But if, if water's not coming from the sky, the roots need to go deep until it hits that, that water bed beneath. And what happens is when God leads us through dry seasons, what he's trying to do is, is hey, God, you know, I, I'm not, it's not going to be circumstantial. It's not going to be through anyone else. It's not going to be through anything uh, that comes from the outside of you. What I need you to do is dig in deep and go deeper than you've ever gone so you can tap into that well, tap into that waterbed that no one sees, that no one can stop, that waterbed that exists uh, uh, deeper than, than any shallow person would ever go. So when people see that you're okay when others are falling apart, it's because um, you have tapped into a, a source that, that they hadn't invested the time to tap into. And I know what has kept me over the years, and it's been a lot of years, it's been decades, and I'm still serving the Lord, I'm still running after him with all my heart, mind, soul, and strength, is I've learned to tap into a source uh, deeper than, than just, you know, casual people that, you know, just kind of come on a Sunday, uh, people that just kind of worship God when they're in a crisis. They'll never know what I know and hopefully what you know that there is a God that can keep you no matter what happens around you if you let your, deep, your roots go deep enough. So we have fruit season, but we also have root season. So those seasons where God's not really answering your prayer, the season when you don't really sense the presence of God, the season when um, things don't seem to be working out uh, the way you plan according to your schedule, that's when your roots are forced to go deeper because you can't get water from those, those uh, just from environmental things. And, and God, again, uses certain seasons of the years to produce fruits 
And uh, so don't fight root season. Uh, don't get mad because it's not fruit season. Just recognize God's purposes in them all. He's a very, very wise God that brings forth. It shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of the world that brings forth its, its uh, fruit in what season, whose leaf also shall not wither. And what he's saying is when everyone else is uh, drying and falling away, your leaves will be green because you tapped into a source. You've tapped into something deeper. Even Wednesdays, you know, um, you say, well, it's not necessary. I go to church on Sunday. <laughs> you want to go deeper. You need all the word you can get. And, and you want to go deeper into to, to, to God's word so that you can tap in to, to that water that, that the casual Christian, the, the casual saint, the, the I'm going to die and go to heaven and that's all I care about. Everything in between, you know, I'm, I'm going to handle on my own. Uh, you're in a different category than that person. And whatever he does shall what? prosper, meaning no matter the circumstances around you, you will land on your feet. And no matter whether it rains, no matter, um, you know, how, how, how little it rains or, or, or just how hot it is, none of that is going to impact you because you have tapped into a, a, a waterbed that is real and that is plenteous and that is not dependent on atmospheric circumstances and all the rest. But then he goes on in verse 4, he says, the ungodly are not so. Their condition is different. Who are the ungodly? People that don't operate by a rule. People who do not operate uh, by uh, God's word, a higher standard. Uh, they, they, they just operate based on what they feel and what they want and what everyone else is saying and, and just the temperature, the circumstances around, around them. Um, so the ungodly are not so. See, the ungodly are only good to the extent or to the degree that the circumstances are good. And we don't want to be like that. We want to be godly. We want to be connected to God. And if God is still God, we're still good. Uh, but are like chaff, which the wind drives away. Now, chaff uh, is, you know, we don't, most of us don't live on a farm, but um, chaff is always lighter, um, yeah, always lighter than the grain itself. And uh, so what, what they would do is, um, in the ancient world, I think I'm going to show you an image of a pan. This is what is used in some Asian countries now. But they would use a fork in the past, and they would, they would throw the, the weed in the air, and um, the wind was just a, a natural divider there, and uh, the wind would blow away the light stuff, and the heavy stuff would fall back to the ground. So you would just keep doing this, and you'd pretty much get rid of all the cha chaff, and eventually you'd be stuck with, with the good stuff. And what he says is the ungodly... Um, are like the chaff. Um, and what, what he's saying here is, is, is the ungodly, ungodly people, people that don't operate by a rule, that don't operate by a standard, don't operate by God's word, they are spiritual lightweights, just a little wind, and they prove who they really are. And we don't want to be that way. This is why I give you the word every week. Um, it's not just my personality and not just, you know, uh, the latest news or what's happening. You know, I'm, I'm not preaching politics every week. I'm not, um, you know, there's a lot of things I could be preaching, you know, pop psychology every week. And, and I'm not doing that. What I'm trying to do every week, line by line, is teach you the word so that when the wind blows, you have something of substance inside your heart, not just a preacher's shout, not, not just uh, a song you remember now. Thank God for the shout. Thank God for the songs. You understand God uses all those things. But really, what I'm trying to get in your heart every single week is God's word so that you will have the stuff that when the winds blow, uh, you will not be moved. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the what? Judgment. Why? Because they have no weight. Uh, they have no spiritual substance. There's nothing really to uh, those that do not live according to God's principle. Now, they may be saved. I don't know. Um, they, they, maybe when they die, they're going to go to heaven. Um, I don't know. Um, I'm not always sure who is who. Because, you know, I just don't know. I don't see inside a person's heart. But uh, ultimately, uh, when life weighs these folks on the scale, they're going to come up meany, meany, tickle, uh, uh, tickle uh, you farsen. Um, that, that's from Daniel, if you guys remember. Um, and basically, you've been weighed in the balance and you come up wanting. And I want to have substance to me so that when the winds blow, I still come down, land on my feet, and uh, I'm not blown with every wind of doctrine and, and all the news. You know, so many people are deconstructing their faith nowadays. So many people are walking away from God. Uh, but this is just the season for that right now. Um, but uh, 
Uh, you want to be a person of substance. So, you know, everyone else may be blown, blown away, but you got this thing and you're going to continue in God's principles and in his ways. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. And what he's saying is there's coming a day when the, the choices we make in this life will become permanent. So if you decided for Christ in this life, um, that decision is going to uh, reveal eternal rewards. Uh, you know, whether you give this week, and by the way, whether you give to the advance fund, which is, again, is going to pack the lives of, of uh, millions of people. I mean, it, what, uh, just our Sundays impacts hundreds of thousands, if not a million people, each Sunday service. When we go into the new building, it's not only going to pack people live, but we're going to continue to broaden our net to reach more people uh, around the globe. So, globe. so but what we, what we need to do is choose life now. So I recognize that, you know what, everything's opening up. You, you got a, a lot of, of new opportunities and things to do. Make sure that you keep the main thing the main thing and keep plugging uh, and, and supporting God's house. Verse 6, for the Lord knows the way of the righteous. Now, I don't always know. I don't know where he's taking me sometimes. I don't really know exactly where I'm going. All I know is that I'm doing what he asked me to do, and I just, you know, just put my head down and, 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 and be as, as faithful as possible. Uh, for the Lord knows the way of the rights. The Lord knows. The Lord got me. The Lord got you. He will keep you. He knows where he's leading you. He knows uh, what he wants you to do. But the way of the ungodly shall what? Perish. Now, this is important, and I'm, I'm done here. Now, it says the way of the uh, ungodly shall perish. Now, Christianity in the book of Acts was originally called uh, the way. Uh, why? Because uh, early Christians understood that um, Christ's message, you know, he said, I'm the way, the truth, and life. But Christ's message uh, was a way of living. It was a way of believing and relating to God based on the finished work of, uh, of, of Jesus. And um, it was that way of living and believing and operating that led to life. But the way of the ungodly shall what? Perish. Just like the check. Chafe. Life will eventually sort things out. Uh, it may not all happen under the sun, but there will come a season when um, God is going to uh, show things, for, sh reveal things. Things that are hidden are, are going to become public uh, and going to be uh, seen uh, by all. And um, those that perhaps didn't give as much reward in this life are going to, they weren't, maybe they weren't celebrated, maybe they weren't honored, but I tell you, in the age to come, if they've committed their lives and obeyed God, they're going to receive tremendous reward. God is going to turn this thing right side up, and uh, he's going to make sure that the, 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 the scales of justice are, 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 are even and, and the way they should be. It said, but the way of the ungodly shall what? Perish. So, you know, you can go to hell in a Cadillac. Or, uh, or you can go to hell in uh, a, a Volkswagen. It, I don't just because you go in a Cadillac doesn't make it any less hell. So you know, you know, a lot of us, you know, we, we're focusing on the on the wrong things. Um, you know, my my car is nicer than your car. My house is nicer than your house. That type of thing. It, it doesn't really matter if you, if you're going to eternal destruction. It doesn't really matter how how nice the journey was there. Um, in fact, I would rather a harder journey so that maybe I'll rethink my, my path. And sometimes that's why some of us even struggle, because he's trying to get us to rethink our, our, our path. Now, I, I went astray there, but that was an important point. But the way of the ungodly shall what? Perish. So the earth, this is important, is full of blessing and cursing. It's full of life and death, light and darkness. The streets we choose to walk on, the corners we choose to uh, stand on, and uh, the company we choose to sit with will determine how we end up living. So he starts by saying, you know, let, let's read it line by line real quick. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, the man that doesn't sit in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. Guard that progression in your life. When you see it, you, you might be walking, but when, when you start stopping because something got your attention that, that is ungodly, be, be, be mindful. And then when you start, getting you start getting comfortable around that, start building your life around it, start building your relationships around uh, that thing, you know you're in trouble. And, and David warned us uh, against this in the first psalm. But the answer is in, in uh, verse 2, but his delight is in the law of the Lord or the word of God. So I'm glad this Wednesday 
you had enough hunger for God to tune me in so you can delight in the Word of God. I hope you learn some things from the Word of God. And, you know, the sower sows the Word. The Word of God is one of the most important things uh, on the planet. We have the Holy Spirit and the Word. The two together, it's really nothing else more important. Like you heard in this teaching, we become the average of the top five people that we spend most of our time with. Who we read, who we watch, and who we listen to has a bigger impact than we often ever realize. The best way to stay on track is to be sure to live a life that is full of substance and deeply rooted in God's Word. In the end, learning to delight in spending time with God and His Word will make for time well spent and ultimately will rub off on our lives. And guess what? The second edition of Live Big Magazine is now out. Live Big Magazine is a premium resource that is designed to help you live big in key areas of your life, such as faith, business, mental health, and more. Best of all, my dad has made this magazine available to you free of charge. That's right, he will even pay for the shipping. So stay tuned, our announcer is coming shortly with more details. We want to tell you about something that we're really, really excited about. It's Live Big Magazine. Live Big Magazine is a free quarterly magazine featuring premium articles from Derek Greer and other expert contributors. It's all designed to help you live bigger in key areas of your life such as faith, business, mental health, parenting, and a whole lot more. The good news is that it's absolutely free with no strings attached. We'll even pay for shipping. All you have to do is go to DerekGreer.com forward slash magazine. That's DerekGreer.com forward slash magazine to claim your free subscription today. Be sure to stay connected with my dad on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter to get his latest updates and teachings on social media. Also, log on to DerekGreer.com to check out the DGM Growth Lab to receive impactful teachings that can help remove barriers that are keeping you from walking in God's best. See you next time on Live Big. Check out the Derek Greer Ministries YouTube channel. Revisit your favorite moments from the Live Big broadcast and watch popular teachings. Get in the now hot takes and dive into Bishop Greer's Ministry Minute and bite-sized noonday teachings that can only be found online. Get all of this and more at home or while on the go. So, subscribe to the Derek Greer Ministries YouTube channel and hit the notification bell to get fresh content from Derek Greer that will help you grow stronger, live bigger, and get closer to God. Connect with Derek Greer Ministries on social media to access Bishop Greer's latest teachings and content. Follow on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Also, be sure to subscribe to Bishop Greer's YouTube channel at Dr. Derek Greer VA and get the latest episodes, ministry minutes, noonday teachings, and more. While you're there, be sure to hit that notification bell to find out when Bishop Greer's latest power-packed videos are uploaded. So subscribe and get ready to propel your spiritual life forward in 2021 and beyond. Derek Greer Ministries is certified by the ECFA. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time on Live Big with Derek Greer.